Hello everybody. Um, in this video, we're gonna continue what we were um, talking about last time about the material balance for reactive systems with recycle streams. So last time we discussed how we're gonna do this um, calculations and we saw how the tiering technique can help us uh, get the system solved. And uh, today we're gonna get the um, uh, the calculations done on Microsoft Excel and see how this is gonna be easier uh, than how it looked like last time. So um, this is the degrees of freedom table and this is what we did last time and um, this is the flow sheet and this is the table where we're gonna do the calculations. So uh, first of all um, we need to uh, determine or uh, um, say which uh, stream we're gonna tier. So last time we uh, we said that we are gonna tier stream seven, um, and it's it's okay, and uh, you you're you're free to to choose which stream you wanna tier. We can do this for stream seven, for stream two, three, or five. It just needs to be one of the streams that's there in the loop. Um, so you can get uh, uh, an assumed and a calculated value. Um, but um, I would prefer to do this for stream number two. Because I, um, I I'll tell you like in, in a minute why I'm, I'm gonna do this. But let's fir let's first say that I'm gonna uh, assume stream number two. Let's first uh, put um, the uh, information that we have. So we have this 330. It's the same thing that we had in in the previous case uh, before we do the recycle stream. And this is 620, and this is 50. So this is the stream number one. Um, the reason why I'm tiering stream number two because um, uh, I'm gonna assume value for stream number two and actually um, if I have a clue that can help me assume a value that's closer to the final value uh, then this is gonna make the calculations faster and uh, the conversions easier. So um, because I know that stream two is the mixing of stream seven and stream one so I know that all the components uh, in stream two should be greater than the components in stream one. So I can assume any value. It's uh, but it's it's uh, it's gonna be something reasonable. I know it's gonna be greater than number one, or I mean the compositions or uh, or the flow rates in stream number one. So I'm gonna calculate some values that gonna that I know are gonna converge easier. So in this case, I can assume values for stream number two, which is let's say I know it's three hundred thirty. I can assume five hundred and can assume eight hundred and one hundred. And for CH3, I can assume like 20 or something. So you are free to assume any values, just something you can roughly put in your numbers because you know that it, it's gonna change. It's not the final value that you're gonna um, do the calculations based on. Um, uh, and then we can go ahead and do our calculations assuming that the stream number two uh, is a value that can I start with. So we will do the same calculations we did last time and we know uh, that all the calculations of the reactor uh, need to be done based on the rate of reaction and we know the rate of reaction based on this conversion which is the 60% um, is gonna be 60% and in this case it will be 60% oops percent of um, the feed stream it's not the the uh, fresh feed it's the total feed that's uh, uh, fed to the reactor so it's gonna be 60 percent multiplied by the co here it's not the co in the feed um, in this case i can do the calculations pretty simply i know the co uh, in stream 3 is gonna be stream uh, co in stream 2 minus uh, the rate of reaction and the hydrogen would be the same minus 2 multiplied by the rate of reaction and the CH4 is an inert so it will be the same methanol equals to the rate of reaction but in this case we have some methanol in the feed so I have to put this into account I put this uh, plus the methanol that's gonna be coming out from the reactor uh, reaction um, it's now okay I go to stream number four we know that we have some relations for the flash uh, separator um, so uh, I'll go ahead and do this one by one so the CO it's gonna be the same in stream number three uh, multiplied by three percent oops I'm sorry um, uh, there's something wrong uh, oops. Oh, here we go so it's three percent of this and uh, for the hydrogen is gonna be the same multiplied by uh, two percent and for methane it's gonna be multiplied by four percent and for methanol it's 96 percent 
here we go so now we are done with the stream number four stream number five is simple it's stream three minus stream four because it's like split I mean um, um, uh, getting two uh, uh, it's like uh, uh, changing the composition of the stream but still the stream three is gonna be splitting into stream four and stream five now let's go to the splitter uh, now we're calculating stream number six and stream number seven, and we said last time that we have the splitter restriction, which is uh, something very specific to the uh, splitter, because it keeps the composition. It doesn't change the composition; just changes the flow rate. And we know that the splitting ratio is ten percent is going in stream six, and ninety percent is going back into stream seven. So we don't need to worry about the calculations. Pretty, pretty simple. We just need to uh, say that each component in stream six is gonna be. 10% of this component in stream 7 so it's pretty simple you don't need to do any uh, like any difficult uh, calculations and the same for stream 7 you can say either it's the difference between, between stream 5 and stream 6 or just to say it's 90% so I'd say it's the difference it's not gonna make any problem here and here we go so it's pretty straightforward and now um, we got all the um, values of the streams and let's highlight this in red just to keep in mind that this is the assumed value and now we need to recalculate stream number two based on uh, the calculations of the mixer so i'll uh, write down here another uh, uh, stream it's called two calculated in these two calculated i'm gonna do the calculations of, of the mixer and calculate another stream which is number two but this is the calculated value and compare it to what i have in stream two that i assumed in the beginning so it's gonna be stream one plus stream number seven and it is the same for all and here we go we have all the compositions and the flow rates uh, of these uh, components and as we see it's not exactly the same but it's close and uh, it means that the, the, the assumption that we uh, assumed was close to the right value and um, but it's not the right value so we need to do something to get the uh, right value of stream number or, or the assumed value to get the, the calculated and the assumed as um, as the same value <coughs> so one thing I like to do is to calculate the difference just to be easier for me to see uh, how much uh, difference I have um, so in this case in this difference you see we have like it's not a big difference a small difference but still a difference there that makes the calculations not very right and actually our goal now is to make this difference zero or to minimize it as much as possible and we remember we did something like this before when we did the least square method calculations so we had two columns and we wanted to get the uh, difference to be minimized and as we know we do the solver and the solver can only do the um, iterations to just set one cell to a specific value and uh, when we did this last time we uh, did the solver on this cell by changing whatever cells that we needed to change but we remember that um, uh, we have here negative and positive values so maybe you can get a zero here but it's not zero in these and that's why we did the difference to the power of two and in this case you have all positive values so I'll just get the square of each one of these so you have positive values and if we can get this cell to be zero by changing the assumed values of stream number two then we have the problem solved uh, and this is what we're gonna do now we'll go to the solver and we'll ask the solver to uh, set the cell uh, uh, of the sum of the differences to the value of zero by changing these cells and we will press solve and it will take some time and here we go and this is the final uh, thing it says uh, here of the, the uh, the final here's the the final uh, solution so i'll press ok now and see what we have so uh, if you see the difference it's almost something to the minus seven so it's zero and actually it's um, it's pretty much the same value between the two calculated and the two assumed and uh, now we have the problem solved and everything is done you just need to uh, put the the calculations in the right way and then it's gonna do everything by itself so uh, uh, it it now looks much easier than it used to look last time when we uh, were talking about or discussing the calculations uh, uh, theoretically um, one last thing we need to keep in mind before we uh, finish everything that uh, you need to uh, 
find the logic or some logic in the um, uh, final values that you have so it doesn't make sense that something here is greater than uh, or, or stream number two is greater than stream number one because you actually two is mixing between one and seven so it doesn't make sense if something here is bigger than here um so just to to make sure that the everything is, is fine sometimes you have just one equation is not right and it may mess up everything so just um to find some logic and just uh, pass by the numbers and see that they uh, they make sense and um um that's all okay bye bye